Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another show of... What is it, Wonga? Which, what's the show called? The Pre-Match Muti. <laughs> That's one, what Remo used last week. Oh, it's yesterday. <laughs> yesterday and last week. I mean, the one and only Pre-Match Muti. As you can see, this is a first for Goal Lounge TV. This is a personal one-on-one with just me and Wonga. Wonga Denga to unpack the eventful things that happened in the last couple of days, and of course, what is going to happen over the coming weekend. Wonga Denga, we might as well kick this thing off, boy. I mean, there's an introduction. Wait, wait, wait. Do you still want to talk about some things? You don't? You haven't given Fresh Legs a shout-out for a while. For those of you who don't know, Wonga Denga is the head development coach at Fresh Legs. Um, I'm going to use the term academy, but if you want to correct that phrase, you're more than welcome to. But please, the floor is yours, Wonga. Just tell the people what you do at Fresh Legs. Yeah, man, we, we are training little kids. Yes, they're quite entertaining, to be honest with you. I think <laughs> uh, they entertain me more than I entertain them. But yeah, we do, we, we're training uh, kids from four years old up until 13, uh, focusing on uh, development, the technical skills of the kids. And yeah, we try to make that fun and enjoyable and also um, a, learn, a good learning environment for them. Uh, but currently, we we operating out of uh, Hatfield, uh, Hatfield, uh, what's this urban in Hatfield, and uh, we also currently cure as well. So yeah, you must look out for us. <laughs> we, you'll, if you don't, if you haven't seen us, you'll definitely see us coming soon, especially towards the end of the year. <laughs> there we go, Wonga Denga. You've done your your plug in there for Fresh Legs. He, we've got the one and only Pums on the line. Wonga, just give Pums a little shout out too before we move on. What up, what up, Pums? There's my fist as well. I I don't know how to do it here on my phone. (laughs) (laughs) And on that note, Pums, thanks for leading the way. You're always leading the the conversation in the comments. If you're joining us for the first time, don't be afraid to comment and get involved in the conversation. We we enjoy it. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and of course, tell your mother's friends, uncle's brother's best friend. We we like uh, growing the circle, right? All the formalities out the way. Wonga Denga, first game of the night we're going to be talking about. Obviously, it's Champions League recap. You've got your opinion about this game. You had your opinion about the game the night before. Um, What did you think about it? Villarreal 2? Yeah, obviously. It was... It wasn't as straightforward as possible. I mean, it wasn't as straightforward as we thought it would be. But, uh, yeah, Villarreal really put up a scare there. Um, Showing that, you know what, their performance against Bayern wasn't, wasn't a fluke. Um, who was that? Was it what's his name? A Cooper? I forgot his name now. This guy who who did that uh, <laughs> that pass for the first goal. <laughs> oh Lord. Um, I think there's uh, Jason. Jason hitting the facts here. Also, Pum's calling you Wanga Shaka. He, he's not letting that one go. And Jason hitting three <laughs> finals, baby. Three, not one, not two, but three uh, finals. I think I yeah, think half time. Um, half time. Came and I think uh, I, I don't know. I think you know Emery just said, "Hey guys, let's just give it to them. Uh, we must uh, try and make sure our spots in the league is also safe because um, that's. I mean, I mean, no, no. I mean, like to be serious though. I mean, the keeper could have done better. Club. He was. I mean, the the first goal through his legs, second goal through his legs, and the third goal uh, was just. I think obviously. Um, obviously, last minutes of the game, we're really thinking they're done for, and yeah, he's killed it. But I mean, those first two goals murdered it completely. Um, I think they could have done better on that. But yeah, Liverpool were prime piling the pressure, and yeah, everyone says that, that yeah, it was coming. So yeah, well, des- I would say well deserved. Well, when um, you say and, everyone, yeah. who, who are you referring to in particular? Where were you getting that that everyone was saying it was coming? What? No, I mean, like, if you looked at, if you watched the game, the commentators, uh, if you, I was also on Twitter as well, people would think he was saying that, I mean, look, they, they thought it was def- the goal was coming, the game was turning, especially after the, the, the half-time whistle. Um, Liverpool were different than they were in the first half. Um, they were looking more threatening. Um, and, yeah, especially when, when Fabinho's goal got in, yeah, I was like, he was what the heck, the keeper, and people, I mean, not people, the commentator then said, um, and fair, fairly so, that, <laughs> that goal was coming. But gee whiz, I mean, God, it was so poor, man. Jeez. Yeah, no, no, no. It was look, so the poor. Keeper, the keeper was a lifeline there for Liverpool. But at the end of the day, when you've got to look at the first half performance, Liverpool were dreadful. I don't think Liverpool have played a game that bad in, or at least a half, that badly in, in a long, long time. They were tired. Uh-huh. The conditions were against them. I think the crowd 
Like we knew they were going to be up for it. They were up for it. The crowd were there. The pitch was wet. Yeah, was the it? pitch was also wet. There, there was a certain that in the far left hand side, it was tough for the guys just getting in and out. And then, of course, we've got like Warren would say, if Warren's still on the line here with us, saying Trent Alexander Arnold is in the same what, WhatsApp group as Harry Maguire. So, I mean, we've, we've had that to contend with as well with regards to Trent, not, not putting in the shift defending. I mean, you know what is funny about that, that goal they conceded was as soon as it went wide and it went in the box, and I saw Trent was the man that had to deal with this. My, my immediate thought was absolute goal. Bang. And there it was. And then we see yeah. the attempt. I'm like, dude, as a right back, at least try and make it seem like, you know, you give a shit about defending. Just try. You don't yeah. have to. We know you're not going to, but just make it look a little bit more believable. <laughs> I don't know what you think about that. No, I agree with you. He, it was Coughlin's goal. He just watched it. Um, and Coughlin didn't get... Um, it wasn't a clean header. And if he had... If Trent had probably jumped with him, I don't even think would have got, it wouldn't have gone in uh, because he was he was uncontested and the header wasn't even clean. And Coughlin's not known for scoring his headers. I mean, <laughs> uh, and, and, he, and he got there. I mean, if Trent, if Trent had just jumped with him, I promise you, I don't think that would have been a goal. Uh, not at all. But I mean, look, at Trent, uh, he's, he does other things. Also. He's definitely not on the field to defend. Um, well, not... He's not on the field for his defending. He's there for um, his crosses and... That's exactly what got them their, their second goal as well. Um, yeah. And it, that was, I mean, that's a good cross with his left foot, his opposite one. And, I mean, he was doing that the whole game, taking a shot, they got to hit the post there. So, yeah, definitely, he's definitely doing more than, um, um, he's definitely doing more up front than a usual uh, right back, you know, your, your standard right back. So, I can understand why Klopp would keep on paying him okay, week in, week out. But, Villarreal, I, I think even, even the real team, I think they would think, that they they literally gave gave it away to Liverpool. They had it. They could have gone through. Um, but yeah, I think Liverpool will also look and say, look, we also um, we've done well to win that game. So yeah. Yeah, look, they did do well. They had to come back from two, not not just one, but two goals down away from home at the Yellow Submarine, which we know is a, it's a it's a rocking sort of place. I think when you're looking at it from a Liverpool perspective, I, I was watching with a few Liverpool fans, as you know, and they were worried. A couple of them were worried and they were thinking, oh, here, here goes the possibility of getting that, that third final secured. And for me, my whole mindset has changed. This, this Liverpool team currently and their performances have, has made me view them in a light where, you know, when you you watching Man City play on the weekends, for example, you're not a Man City fan, but you know, the likelihood of them winning is very, very high. Even if they go 1-0 down, 2-0 down, right? You know it's inevitable that they will come back at some point, right? And, and you're able to establish that feeling because you're not a diehard Man City fan. So you detach yourself and you just know what the outcome is going to be. You, you know which feeling yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was literally watching that game with that feeling and it was a bizarre thing. It's a bizarre shift that this team was able to make me think that. And I just went, no, nah, I was relaxed. I just had another beer and I was like, no. They're coming back into this. And the other guys were like, what? What is coming? And then it came. And I said, yeah, you see? But to your point, the, the Villarreal keeper did them no favors. It was an absolute yeah. gift of a first goal. And as soon as that happened, you know, momentum changed. The, the conversation Klopp had at halftime was key. The change he made in taking off Jota, not many managers would do that at halftime. Take off one of the key members in your front three. And I say key right now. We've got four or five key players up front, let's be honest. But Jota wasn't doing the business and he took him off. We weren't getting the sort of linker play that we needed. We had no control of the game. I don't think anyone played well that first half. And I think, you know, conditions aside, the field is also a lot smaller. So what is quite interesting was Konate's come in. We know my team's got a good relationship with Virgil van Dijk. Now all of a sudden there's this extra space where they're getting caught out, where they're not used to getting, they're used to being able to recover with the pacing behind. And they weren't getting that because the shorts, uh, the, the pitch is a bit shorter. So they were getting caught off guard. And that was quite interesting as to how they turned around. And for me, I'm happy because like Jason's already commented, three finals, Wonga. Three finals. Also, you want to show that's, the people what you... Yeah, yeah? That's what I want to see. Uh, they must get, that's what I said uh, yesterday on Tuesday. They must get to all the finals and get axed. They must get axed one by one. <laughs> That'll be very better for me. Okay, you're super happy there. Warren's saying Rail showed now with Chelsea and City that they are not to be taken lightly, and this is the stuff that they thrive on. Well, overall performance. I mean, we've touched on the Liverpool performance. We looked at obviously a couple of changes that they had. We're going to go into the Premier League games this weekend, but the the next game 
arguably one of the greatest comebacks in Champions League history, or at least that's what Celo was tweeting. What did you think about this game? Champions League, Real Madrid 3, Man City, what, 1? And this was them coming back within a space of four minutes? Less? Yeah, r- ridiculous. Could it, uh, I don't know if people are exaggerating to say 2, but I watched that game, but it was, it was, it was quick. Um, but uh, yeah, that game, that game was hectic, man. Um, I didn't get to watch um, uh, most of the first half, uh, but I did catch the whole of the second half. But I mean, yeah, I think again, the first leg, Vinicius was a problem. And how do you know that you've got a Kyle Walker starting? Obviously, he wasn't 100% fit, um, and Cancelo as well. When Walker comes off, where does Cancelo go? Cancelo goes that that side where Vinicius is. And I did mention this on Tuesday as well. Um, with that thing of a Fabinho making a mistake, Vinicius, his pace is a problem. It's a huge, huge problem. Um, and this game as well, you could see, you could see it, 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 it was also a problem as well. But nothing, I mean, came off that side. Um, Man City, did they get that many open opportunities? I think they had, they had one or one or two shots. I mean, I don't think. I mean, the one that Courtois saved. The one that, that that's the one I saw. I think the one who was it, it was Cancelo hit a good strike. Courtois, Courtois saves that one. Um, but I mean, yo, Madrid. I don't think anyone expected it. It's ninety minutes. I think Madrid fans probably think it's over. You can even hear the fans. They were they were they were silenced by Man City's goal. Um, quiet, 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 quiet. And I think then you know people are just thinking, you know, it's done. And you know, you're hoping. You're hoping. I even had a little thought past my head, thinking, imagine they just they do again in these in these. I think it was the 86 minutes. I thought I was thinking to myself, imagine they do again. They do, they do exactly what they did to Chelsea now, you know. But I, I just it was just a passing thought. And there comes Rodrigo. And did you see the goal? He, he what's his name? He's who was it before? Someone else touches the ball before he headers it. It's literally taking the ball off flat. I don't know how he's even got it exactly on his head. Over the, and he's probably jumping before. I don't even know if it was a fluke or what, but it looked perfect. So I, I, I couldn't I couldn't understand how he scored the goal. But I don't even think anyone cares about that. They're just worried about the ball being in the back of the net. And there goes Carlo Ancelotti, does his eyebrow, and then you know. No, very good. Uh, Rodrigo, very Yo. good. I put you on the field. You scored two good goals. Yeah? Make me proud. Eh? I you know, love that. Sounds more Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did but call that. I mean, was, that was ridiculous. It was uh, ridiculous. I can't let Wanga Pum saying not having a number nine or focal point is what City lacked. And I think that, you know, we know that. But, yes. But yes. Go ahead, Wanga. Yeah, so I, I, I forgot. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so because if, if if Man City have their chances, even in the first leg, they could have buried Man, uh, Madrid. They could have buried them. When Grealish comes on, Grealish was ripping them apart. Just it might have been two or three runs, but all of those runs could have led to uh, should have led uh, could have led to goals. The one should have been a definite goal. Um, and 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 for me, I felt like that was even a, 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 that was even. Um, uh, and I say big ups to Mendy because I think you, if you look at it, it's almost like, you know, Villarreal when they concede that last goal. It's sort of like that. Like, you know, the keeper's running out. It's the last play. They really don't really care if the ball goes in the game. You know, they feel like, ah, the game is over. And, you know, Mane gets the ball and, and, he, and he buries them. And I felt the same thing happened there with Grealish as well. He's gone through the left. He's beaten. He, he, he tried the first time. They fouled him um, as he got on. The, um, I can't remember. Was it, uh, it was a Mokinos. He fouled him. The second time he goes there, he's run, run at pace. He's gone there. He's beaten Courtois. He's beaten Courtois. And he puts the ball. Basically, he has to finish. And there comes Mendy. Everyone does just... Everyone, most of the guys you can see are just watching. It's open at the back. Mendy comes in and he cuts the ball out. Um, and he gives, you wouldn't have realized it then, but he's given Madrid a, a lifeline here. He's given, because you think the game is over anyways. So it doesn't really matter if Chris puts it in. But he saves them. He literally saves If that goal goes in, it's done. It's done. They, when he puts it out, and there Rodrigo comes on and he does his business. And then Benzema, it had to be him. Mm, um, the, the good type of business, the not sword. the bad type of business. He gave him a number two solid there. Eh? Number yeah. two. He said, Coach, I need a number two. Can you put me on? <laughs> and he went there. <laughs> Solid business. Two goals. Yeah. And changed the game quick, quick. But uh, what is no, quite no. interesting was, I did say this. And I love the fact that Celo tweeted this. I said this. I said, the player who can make the difference for Man City was Bernardo. Because he's the one player in my mind 
who's got the right mentality and the others need to draw inspiration from this guy and they didn't quite do it. And at the end of the day, the only reason Man City go, th- oh, Man City, Real Madrid go through to this final is because that stadium, that second leg was played at the Bernabeu, which we knew would be a factor. That stadium yeah. made them believe that they have the right to demand that final and that's how they get away with it because City were the better team for large parts of the game. They, they should have been, in the, they should be in the final now. And, and you know yeah. what's interesting about the whole, you know, City choking, Pep Guardiola, et cetera, et cetera. Wonga, from a coaching perspective and from your, your development perspective, when you're looking at it and you see what Guardiola did, taking off De Bruyne, was, was that a good move? Taking off Rodrigo, taking off Mares, when, when you are one all up, did, did you think that was sort of the right approach for the man to take? Uh, he took off Mares for Grealish, am I right? Yeah. Then he, yeah, uh, look, uh, Grealish... When Grealish came on, he did. If Pep, if that's what Pep asked of him, then he did exactly what Pep asked him to do. He took on those guys. He was quicker than them, and all the runs he did. Every time he got the ball, it was it was really really dangerous. He cut in the one time, tried to shoot, didn't get it right. But the one, like I, I did, I did explain to you guys that should have been a goal. That should have been the one goal. You know, I mean, yeah, you're getting four, you get three chances, and then one, um, one goal. I think that's good. I think Grealish does enough. He's done enough. He's beaten the keepers, put, and he's passed the ball. Correctly, but has he has uh, he and, done a hundred million pounds worth of enough? If you think about it, yeah, it's gone past. He should have he should have scored. But again, Mendy comes back. He does Mendy does his job as a defender, uh, and that's why I say I won't say that. I mean, Grealish hasn't. I mean, he he's literally falling as well. It's a very complicated uh, thing to do. I think I think Pep. Um, um, you can say it was the wrong decision or whatever, but I think he's made a decision that made sense. Grealish was fresher. And and he showed it. He showed it uh, that he was going to that he that he could cause problems with so, instantly. So you, I think within so, so, okay. didn't take five minutes. So, so you're ruling out. You're ruling out that this had any to do, anything to do with Guardiola. What, what, no, what is, everyone's blaming. Yeah, I say everyone's blaming Guardiola, and I, I can't understand. Why. Like Kevin De Bruyne comes off, and I think there's some. They say there's something wrong with him. That's uh, um, he's not 100 percent. And fair enough, you know, you got the league. You also got to fight for as well. You've got quality on the bench. He puts on he puts on Gundogan. You're not going to get a Kevin De Bruyne performance from Gundogan. I think two completely different players. But when he puts on Grealish, when he put on Grealish, he was a problem. Like, but as I said, Madrid did their, their business and they they, they defended. Um, the whole team was the whole team was beating Grealish. Beat the whole team. Mendy did his job, stopped them, and that was enough. I think if that goal goes in, it changes it changes the game for Man City. And I think that's why Pep had put him. If Pep had put him on for that reason. Um, Madrid blocked it, you know. I, I don't think then what, what else, what more can you do? What more could you do there? As De Bruyne was, De Bruyne, De Bruyne played the whole, uh, the whole 90 minutes. He was, um, I'm not saying he was ineffective, but yeah, obviously, I mean, he's tired. You got you can try to get more fresh legs in. No one that came on the field put in a, put in a, a, a sub performance, you know, put in a, a performance below zero, you know. I think everyone who came on did fine. Grealish did more than he, Grealish did more than he, I think Greece did exactly what he should have done and it, it didn't work out because of Madrid's good defending. I can't blame Pep in this at all. I can't see why you would blame Pep. It's just the... Oh, look, at, look, at you. look at you putting, putting that up that's there. That's what it is. The, the Raising Angela that eyebrow, effect. ending off that statement there with a nice ra- raised eyebrow. Pum saying Grealish needs to start more longer. Based on what you're saying, I think you could agree with that. I, when we're looking at it overall... Now we're looking at royalty. We're looking at the setup, the, the game that is to be coming towards the end of the season. That is the final between these two. You can say this, and I'm not just saying it because I'm a Liverpool fan, Wonga, even though it might come across yeah, extremely yeah. biased. But these, this, is, this is European royalty. You've got 13, 13 wins for the... Uh, you're pulling that face, but you've never won. Arsenal have never won a Champions League, so I don't know why you're pulling that face. But we're looking at it. Liverpool have won six times. <laughs> if they win this, if they win this, they go on seven. They become the second most successful side in par with Ace Milan. When we're looking at the final that sets up, Angelotti making history now. The first manager to make five European finals. Interesting fact, this is going to be the third time he faces Liverpool in a final, losing one and then winning this, the other. Another interesting fact, Wonga Denga. The last time... So, so Real Madrid have made it to the last seven finals. They've won every final. The last time they lost the final in the European Cup was in 1981. And guess against who it was? Barcelona. Liverpool. And take a guess. <laughs> take a guess where it was played. It was played at Anfield, was it not? In Paris. 
in was it Paris? in Paris? Play, played in Paris. So I don't know if you, if, if anyone's out there reading Omens, look out for that. Let's see what happens. But so the opposite is going to happen. <laughs> the opposite is going to happen. More, more to the point, though. Let's let's we're going to talk about this in terms of seeing Real Madrid. What's interesting is they've obviously come through a tougher route. They've beaten. Chelsea convincingly from a comeback. They've beaten PSG. They've beaten Man City. And you could say now, they arguably, if we're looking according to these omens, the story has been written for this, this Real Madrid side to do the double for their season after winning the league. The spirits are high. We're looking at Liverpool, though. You could also argue the stars are lining for them. So the question is, I have for you, Wonga, in terms of the quadruple versus the double, in terms of the harder route versus another different route, which side, and I know you, you've been saying the whole time, you've been saying Liverpool are going to lose. But in your heart, honestly, not, 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 not the heart, sorry. You always think with the heart. <laughs> with your head, what do you think is going to happen here and how do you see it playing out? I, you know, we asked, we, asked, we asked this question about the Man City game and I said Man City. I said Madrid are going to win because of that thing. You just don't know what you can expect from them. Um, and again, no one expects it. Again, they were saying this again now for like the third time. <laughs> no one expected that, and I don't, I don't even think the man, the manager expected it himself. And you know, now you're mentioning a PSG that reminded me of how they performed against PSG. That was probably, um, yes, sir. I forgot to put the charge on my phone. That was probably <laughs> the. The first leg also, they played against PSG. Sorry, Wonga, I just probably... want to give a little shout out. I just want to give a shout out here to Kappa Reacts saying Liverpool have a hard time to cont- uh, contain Benzema from scoring. Okay, go ahead, Wonga. Tell them, Kapo. Tell them, Kapo. Listen, I think <laughs> um, if you look at Madrid, the, the, it's, it's literally, you can see, this is, this is a team that, that probably <laughs> they really want to, they believe in themselves. I don't exactly know what exactly it is, but I mean, they've pulled it out against PSG. Let me get back to that point. Against PSG, they played the first the first leg. They were atrocious, Claudio. There was, there was, I don't, I don't think anyone had any hope that they were going to beat PSG in the second leg, because the first leg they was completely dominated. The passing, the everything. And I mean, if you looked at that, you'd say definitely, there's no ways they can they could stand up against the Man City. There's, there's there was no ways they could stand up, stand stand against the Man City playing like that in the first league. But they went through. I mean, now they the final playing against Liverpool, taking out Man City, taking out uh, Chelsea. Um, and, <laughs> yo, I, 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 and I mean, I mean, I mean they've I done think, well. I, I mean, they scored. Something to note, though, is the, the teams they've taken them out and how this is, has played out. And Pum saying the team with a tough route to the final normally wins. And, you know, that, you know, we can't argue with that because there's that momentum that carries us. There's the belief when you're taking out the best, you tend to go into the final thinking you are the best. So you have an ownership the moment you step out of the pitch. The difference is with all these games, though, is the secret of the Bernabeu. That second leg was played at the Bernabeu. And we know how influential that is. In terms of this, this is a one-off game. This is a game against Liverpool, who we know, who we know, we, we talk about the Madrid crowd. Now, I've been in, uh, in 2019, I was there. I was sitting in between the Madrid crowd and the Liverpool fans were there. Now, we've got these two sets of fans. We've got Liverpool that are crying out for this, not even crying out, they're, they're set to, unchie- to achieve the, the unthinkable in the quadruple. We've got the roots now, you're saying, Real Madrid had a tougher route. Liverpool also, in the beginning, put in the group of death, arguably in terms of the, the teams that they had with regards to Atleti, AC Milan, and obviously Porto. That was the harder of the groups. They got fortunate, you could argue, in terms of the route to the final. But they're still competing on multiple fronts, which is an added pressure. But now, how, how do you look at these two and you say, ah, is this, is this route going to be the difference? Also, Trent versus Venetia G- Junior, Pums is saying. Yeah, and, and, and Pumis is right. Pumis is right. That's exactly what it's going to be. They're going to play a high line, and Vinicius is going to say, thank you, cheers, bye, the whole game. Um, let's see. I want to see what Kapo says here. Yeah, I think the mistake Antelotti made was not starting Kamavinga. It is also it also may suit them in not playing Alaba as Indian Nacho was phenomenal last night. Yeah, I think with the Kamavinga, I think he's. I think they'll they'll probably ease him into um, these things. I mean, you starting a Madrid at Casemiro because of the experience, uh, and, and 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 those guys are, you know, a, a Casemiro. Do you see what Casemiro did? He, how did he get off the field out of yellow card? How did Casemiro get off the field out of yellow card? Dark arts. The same way Fernandinho always gets away with it. 
he, he's literally he's chopped the guy, scissor kicked the guy from behind, number one. Then the second time he's pulled the guy down by, by the by the shoulder. You know, and then, and I think then actually I just think, okay, no, you know, we've got the final, let's take him off. Kamavinga comes on and it's I think it's uh I can understand why he's done it. I can understand why you would not start the Kamavinga and, and then rather bring him on and start the start a Casemiro because you you can't let uh, you can't make a Man City you can't let a Man City um play fluently. I mean Kamavinga came on and he made some very good tackles, eh? Um and they needed those legs towards the ends because you got people like Bernardo Silva and them. If the other guys like uh, like like oh well, Casemiro and Modric, um, they, they'll probably tend to be slower slower in the in, in, I mean the, the towards the end of the games. Come on, comes on and you could see there was a lot of energy in him, um, a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. So I can understand why he's done that. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, <laughs> I I just think Madrid, Claudio again, they've got this, um, they've got something up their sleeves. I don't even think they know what it is, but it will be available to them when they're playing against Liverpool. Uh, and yeah, I, I just think second leg, would they beat the other teams, I don't even think that matters. I just think... So, so, um, this one's also final. so also, if we've got to compare the two now, Liverpool still have the FA Cup final coming. They're still obviously in, in contention for the league and they've got to keep fighting every game from here on in. Real Madrid now can afford to take a break. They've got one game left of the season that means a lot to them. It's this game. Will this preparation for them, will this gap building up to this final be a hindrance or will it be beneficial for Real Madrid? The gap the gap in what? Sorry, I didn't hear that. The gap in terms of Real Madrid going, we've got one game to prepare for and not being necessarily competitive on all fronts because oh, their season, yes. as things stand, is pretty much done. They've already wrapped up the league. They can afford to rotate players. They've got one game, which is this final, to prepare for. Would it help them? Or will the fact that Liverpool are still competing on all fronts um, be beneficial for Liverpool or will it be tiring for Liverpool? How Look, do you I see th- it I think it'll, I think it'll be it'll be a bit more complicated for Liverpool. Um, he's got to be very careful I mean who he plays think about it carefully especially if he wants to win it all um, because now if he goes guns in and he, and he plays his best team against every team is, uh, then there's a chance the best players will get injured you know? so he's got to be very tactical about it. Um, Ancelotti can maybe yeah, he can probably rest a few players. He can also try out maybe something that maybe he's thinking about. They can, um, they can punish a Liverpool. See if it works during a match. You can also see if it works during a training session. Um, I think yeah, it 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 would be. I think it will just be more complicated for Liverpool. They'll have to look at it um, more carefully than Real Madrid. Yeah, they've got they've got more. Real Madrid have more leeway definitely. And I think yeah, it would it 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 would play a big. If Liverpool get those decisions wrong. Um, throughout, um, which they've done, they've actually got away with it. Not got away with it. Let me say they've done, they've played the right team, they've got the right results. Um, so, but if if now they get an injury, you know, like then, like this weekend they're playing against the Tottenham, and a Tottenham can hurt them. But and and, and they'll need someone like a, they'll need a, see, they'll Wonga, need the Yotas, all those guys to punish them. So, Wonga, I see it in a slightly different manner. I think it depends on the engine that you're running. So. If you've got a very good engine, you can stop start where needs be. So if you need to take the, the car down to the coast for the weekend and you can just start it and take it, then great. But sometimes it's better to leave the engine running warm, running hot. And I think in Liverpool's case now, the engine's very warm and they can't afford to switch off. Maybe you can say when we're looking at the Villarreal sort of game, the engine you know, needed to be switched off a little bit and they needed to rotate one or two things, but it's going. And at the end of the day, the car knows where it's going and the players believe where they're saying, where they want to go. And we look at Salah's comment coming out yesterday saying, yes, he's ready for this. He obviously wants to exact revenge from from 2019. So there are a lot of different narratives we can play around here. But I think when we're looking at it specifically as to what you think and what everyone else in comments thinks. Also, a couple, thank you very much for the comments. This is the first time you're joining us and we appreciate these comments. Uh, But what do you think, Wanga? Which side are you leaning towards here to take this this, uh, trophy home? Yeah, I think um, firstly with that, I think I was going to say Capo is definitely right that Liverpool have the, those players to do that, and that's probably why uh, Klopp has gone out and bought, bought these. Uh, well, let me say Liverpool has gone out and bought these players to make sure they've got cover because they're trying to gun for everything because um, they're going to need more than one squad to do that. That's the truth um, about it. Uh, but Madrid, I mean, look, they've won their league. Uh, to be fair, to be fair, they've won their league quite convincingly. Uh, comfortably, uh, Barcelona not even in contention with that. The other guys not in contention for that. And then they've gone and they've 
they've just won the league. They've celebrated it. They've taken their, their trophy through the city, and then they've gone and beaten Man City in the semi final. So I think their heads are in the right place. You know, <laughs> their heads are in the right place there. Uh, but in the final, I I think a Madrid will win it. I I just think it's all written for Karim Benzema, and yeah, then he takes the Ballon d'Or come end of the year. <laughs> and now, now we now we've lost the Claudio. We'll see where he goes with that. But yeah, look, I, 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 Capo, I, I agree with you on that one. Eh? Um, the the Diaz out of Firmino, Salah, and I mean, even if they do play, uh, <laughs> even even if they they they, they get like a, if a if a Diaz is injured. They, or, and if a Diaz is injured and a Yota is injured, you still got a, a Firmino, Mane, uh, Salah. Even if one of Salah and Mane are injured, uh, you're still fine. Even if Salah and Mane are injured, I think they still pose a threat. And that's 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 how um, I would say that's how fortunate um, Liverpool are at this moment. Um, in, 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 in I mean their prep uh, for this game. I was going to see if there's any other comments here. Liverpool are taking it. That's what Pooms thinks. Oh, Pooms, Pooms, Pooms. Okay, okay. Just showing some love there. Hey, Capo, tell us what 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 uh, channel are you bringing there? We'd like to hear. And then I see. Oh, Kamavinga also saying that your daughter start uh, Kamav- uh, Tony Cross uh, Kamavinga ahead of Cross. Um. Kamavinga, uh, Kapo, also, you must just tell me there why you would like to start um, a Kamavinga over Kroos. I'd like to know that. Because for me, if I look, if I'm looking at, <laughs> if I'm looking at a, uh, I can see why Ancelotti is playing a Kroos and all those guys are him. I know those guys are, well, fact, we all know, they, they're getting old now. I think they, I think it's just easing a Kamavinga into this um, Real, Madrid, uh, Real Madrid squad. I see he doesn't start every game. He comes in most of the time. But look, I mean, when he comes on, he puts in a shift. That's the honest truth. That's the honest truth about it. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm happy about that. Where, where is Barrero? He's supposed to be putting up these... Um, the next... Who's the next comment there? Chris is the one. Yeah, he's... <laughs> I, I agree with you, Booms. I... I agree with you there, Pums. Uh, he, he's the... He's definitely... He's definitely... Uh, he's definitely... What's the right word for him? He's, he's, yeah, it's top class, man. I mean, even if you get... Even if you get... Um, even if you get... Um, I mean, a, a players like him and Modric... I mean, look, Modric... Class him also class as well, but like I, like I say, I think you he's just easing. You don't want to be putting that much um, responsibility on him. I mean, immediately, you know. I mean, I, I would do the same if I was in in in, a, in in a Madrid shoes. I would also just ease ease the guy into those um, in, into the matches. Um, it, it it makes sense. He's gonna be. I think he's probably a long term project. I would assume um, because those guys are. I mean. You just you would think, especially if um, Modric and them go on and win this this Champions League final, I I don't see why they would not um, you know maybe go back and play in, in their homelands or or you know just uh, call it quits because I mean I I think Kroos has won the World Cup and uh, and uh, um, I don't know if Modric would would try and do it. He got close, but I think yeah, I mean he's, I think he got as close as he, he could in his career. Uh, but yeah, I mean that would be up to them. But yeah, I mean we should be moving on to the the fixtures for the weekend. And <laughs> I do not. Oh, here comes Claudio. We're gonna move on to it in the dark. Barrero, imagine. Let me, imagine. Let me fill you in. I was just about to move on to the the fixtures for the weekend. I didn't want to start with the. The Liverpool <laughs> and the Tottenham game. I'd like to finish off with that one. 
<laughs> wait, but, but wait, 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 wait. Firstly, I just, I just want to jump on and say, Wonga, well done. This is the first time ever we've had a one-man show here, one-man band. Uh, Escom <laughs> decided to throw, throw you and, and, and throw you in the, in the deep end and see how you could swim. And I think you've done well. So if you're watching for the first time, this is Wonga manning the show. So well done, Wonga Digger. If, if Arsenal perform like you did right now, they'll be okay. Um, we've got a couple of comments in here. Arsenal finishing ahead of Manchester. That's from Warren. Uh, there we go, and, and Pum saying it. <laughs> there we go, thank you. And Pums, don't forget, we're finishing ahead of Chelsea. That's what we're gunning for. It's not a top four. Like, maybe Tottenham, Tottenham and Man United are gunning for top four. That's cool. Us, we're going for top three. We've passed that stage. We're sitting right, on that so, level, actually. So, Wonga, I'm assuming we, we're on the, the Premier League sort of fixtures. Is that where we're at right now? Yeah, we're about to start, yes. We okay, end with the Liverpool and Tottenham. Okay, no, no, we don't. We can't end with that because we, you know, Settle always complains. We need to stick according to schedule, so we tackle it according to schedule. <laughs> First game for the weekend: Chelsea versus Wolves. This is Pumza's team. Um, also, Wonga, you say Arsenal getting for third place. What do we think is going to happen yeah. here at Stamford Bridge versus Wolves? I, look, I think if I've seen Chelsea of late, I mean, after they've gotten knocked out, it's it's, it's put a bit of a dent there. Eh? Um, I think it's done something there. I don't know if in terms of, you know, I mean, like now, even now, the, the club is in a limbo. They don't know the, the, who's owning the club. They don't know what's going to be happening. I mean, if there's still going to be a club next year. Uh, of course, I mean, that'll have, but they, they really don't know what's happening. The future of the club is not there. You know, the players really don't know. And I think that's why for a player like Rudiger, it makes sense. Okay, people are coming for me. Let me just dip out, you know. There's more certainty in that. And I just don't know. I mean, I trust these, these matches that they, they're losing, it's matches that... Uh, yeah, I mean, they started the season so well, and I don't know where. I mean, before beginning the season, I used to, I, I mean, you'd, I was saying that, you know, this, this defense is impenetrable. It's you can't you can't get through it. And I, I physically couldn't I couldn't see a team scoring. Now, ah man, you know, you pinch Chelsea, so you can score, you can score, and the Wolves will see that. I think the Wolves are even, um, yeah, Wolves are probably yeah also the better defending sides in the league. Um, I'm not sure how they did in their last game. But I think they will pose a threat to Chelsea. They lost. They actually lost three 0 to. Look, they haven't done well. They lost three games. They've lost three in a row. They lost one 0 to Newcastle away from home. They lost away to Burnley, and then they lost at home three 0 to Brighton, who are currently sitting five and points beneath them. So, Wonga, it's a lot asking from this side, but maybe, no, maybe it's about time they break their pattern. Eh? Three losses in a row. That's it. That's exactly my thought. Then you go look at how, what is the winners of the last time Wolves lost four times in a row um, this year. And yep. I think that's what, if, if, you, if, you, if you're looking at that, then you're thinking, okay, now these guys are sitting there like, no ways. I mean, it's a, it's a Chelsea. It's a, Chelsea. Um, it's, a, it's a good team to actually uh, prove our resolve um, against. And they've got the capability to do it. They've frustrated, they've frustrated the Man City many a times um, when, while they've been up. Um, to get out of the ritual. Nah, nah, nah. I'm telling you, they're, they're the point. They're gonna probably draw, and we'll be one step closer onto Chelsea. Uh, come after our game, yeah, is, but yeah, is, is, I, is I, Kapo I, react an Arsenal fan? Is that what's going on here? What if Liverpool is don't help I'm, us with yeah. the result against Spurs? Then I hope. Hey, Kapo, you see, I knew this guy was a logical man. <laughs> I could only, you could only be an Arsenal supporter. <laughs> Hey, Aman, what up? What up, Aman? We're just, in Aman house. We always you it? It? We're just discussing how Arsenal are going to finish top three this year. Warren also, Pereira. Warren saying my background looks like a, di a distant memory forming. Yes, yeah, that's what it looks like. Here. <laughs> but right now, we're trying to live in the present. Um, the, the current memory we're looking at is obviously this Chelsea Wolves game. Uh, Pums is feeling very confident. I mean, Chelsea, realistically... If we're looking at Chelsea, they're in the same spot our goal line squad is right now, Wonga Dengu. Let's look at it. We've got Selo, who wants to be on a holiday because he knows his team have nothing to play for. We've got Matt, who's got other commitments in between. They're not sure, you know, if uh, his, his house is going to get bought or sold. He's got Kitty's commitments. So he's all over the place and he's waiting for Chelsea to be sold. Then you've got Nick, who started up a new thing and he's distracted. So that's kind of where we are. We know it's end of the season blues for Chelsea. This is where they are. They've obviously, similar to Real Madrid, they've got one game to look forward to. That's the FA Cup. Are they going to put all the eggs in that basket? And Pums, should they be yeah. doing that? Should they maybe be resting some players, trying one or two things out here and getting ready for next week's game? 
And I suppose there's two more games before that final because there's obviously a midweek game as well. And then the question I have is Lukaku, the elephant in the room. And this is a direct comparison because the man is big. Um, I don't know if he's a long big like Pac- Patrick Vieira, but um, but he is a big man. What, what's going to happen to this guy? Is, is is it done? It's done for him at Chelsea, surely. Yeah, I mean, I think I think looking at like what's happening in the club as well. Um, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, looking at what's happened in the club and all his comments before, I think him leaving, I would say it's very possible. I would say like 90% possible that, that he definitely leaves at the end of the season. He's not playing games now. Um, yeah, and when he comes on, he's not... I mean, look, I, I we tipped him down to score 20. Um, we tipped him down to score 20 and it went... It's actually... It's, it's felt like it's gone... I was like, hey, Aman, we, uh, Arjun, we get it. Hey, these guys. <laughs> he he okay. doesn't believe it, Arjun. He's saying it's not going to happen. He's saying it's not. <laughs> Arjun, <laughs> guys, we'll shock you. We'll shock you. We'll shock Pums you guys. Pums, yeah, Pums but... is like, do you remember those protests on the corner here of, of Bears, Nordia, and whatever, Malabong, where all those old white ladies, when they're trying to get Zuma out of um, his role as president, they were going, Zuma, <laughs> yeah. must, Zuma must go. Here's Pums of the sign saying, Lukaku must go. Lukaku must go. <laughs> Out. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's doing now. Um, but yeah, I think... Um, I, I, yo, I, I just... I, I think, yeah, with Lukaku, it's... Uh, I think it's it's I think it's 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 more yeah it's more certain than not that he would probably leave, especially with the what he said before and all that stuff. I, I can't see him staying, especially what's happening now. Unless he's unless he's a person who would want to sort of show you know that and and, and sort of redeem himself. I think he can. I think he still has the ability to do so. But uh, yeah, that's up to him. Maybe go back to the Italian league. I think for me it would make sense to actually play in the Premier League and. And, and try to prove yourself there, you know, because there's so many people that are saying the, that. The, the problem, proof, though, proof that he does. has, longer. the problem that he has is that he's earning crazy money now at Chelsea. He's one of the higher play, uh, higher paid players in the squad. We know that Italian clubs, clubs aren't going to be able to afford that. So it's a decision that he needs to make. Does he stay at Chelsea, not get game time, but get paid? Or does he leave for football reasons? And take a pay cut. That's kind of where he's at the moment. I'm thinking the man for his career has to leave. He can't just sit bench like a bale and take up golf. Unless him and, and him and Bale want to start like a golfing tag team or golfing club, then maybe maybe they aren't something there, but I don't know. Quick fire. Wonga. Chelsea versus Wolves. Score prediction. I say two two. Two two draw. Mm. Two two draw. You think that's gonna carry yeah. over into the next game? You think they just don't give a shit about results until the final? Would because I mean, surely you can't go towards the FA Cup final not picking up points. It, that affects momentum. It affects morale. Uh, I, but I, I think the only thing I think Wolves are also going to be fighting for it. Four losses in a row. I can't see a Wolves doing that. So oh look, I'm on. I'm on saying we've had our finals last week and this week, so they've been busy, which is why I've not been able to make the recent videos. Thank you, I'm on. I hope that went well, and thanks for the update. So at least we know. We know. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, you're also saying apparently the De ba- Baia is going to enter, so maybe Juventus for Lukaku. That's that's a good point. Um, we've got Pum saying 2-0 Chelsea, so he's saying Chelsea win outright. I think Chelsea have to win this. Uh, they have to win this. They, they, there's no ways. Um, so I'm going to say 1-0 victory to Chelsea. Wonga saying 2-2 draw. Before we move over to the next game, Copper saying, who was the last striker who done who did well at Chelsea? Venner flopped. Lukaku, Murata. I think it goes all the way Torres. back to Diego Costa. Torres, Lukaku would do better at another club. There we go. And on that note, we're going to move on to the next game. Brighton versus Man United. I know Tillow's on holiday and his team's technically on holiday. But Brighton are playing for something. They are playing for catch up there. They want to try and finish as high as they can. You know, and they're not, not bad run of form at home. Also, what does it really mean? If like this, Should we even talk about this result? Because if they lose, I know... Arjun's here, Man United representative in the house. But who cares if they want to lose here, really? Should we care? Hey, bro. I, I, I can't lie to you. I kind of sort of feel sorry for Man United. Like, it's quite sad. I mean, you don't hear the fans anymore. Yeah, they're losing games. Even this weekend when they were playing, I was like, oh, yeah, they, <laughs> they won. Well done, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. Mm. When, you, when your rivals are feeling bad for you and saying, yeah, let them, let them get a point, eh? Yeah, bro. Uh, but 
And, 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 and there's Amon Wright, the, the best player, the guy that everyone is <clears throat> saying that he's uh, is causing problems. He's the, one that's, he's, the, he's the one that's keeping them up. He's literally the guy. He's putting the penalties in the back of the net where they should be. Um, scored a free kick, scoring out the box, scoring headers. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's always doing 20, what are they saying, 20, 24 goals, 23 goals now. Um, and, and I don't know how, how, how that is. I don't know. I think he's doing more good than, than bad, like other people are saying. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, he's putting the bones back in the net, keeping them quiet. Uh, but a Brighton, Claudio, a yeah. Brighton. I, I actually feel for. I think they're gonna lose. <laughs> That's the honest truth. I think Man United's gonna lose. I can't. I can't lie to you. But I agree yeah, with the man that if Ronaldo pulls up, they they've got something. But I think they'll lose. I think they'll yeah, lose against Brighton. So, so on that on that note, what's your score prediction? Also, Copper saying they're fighting. They're fighting for the Conference League, lol. <laughs> <laughs> I I think. I would say 2 1 to Brighton. Man United to score, but yeah, I, I think they lose. Yeah, I'm going to say, I think it's a good shot, Wonga Denga, but I think Ronaldo, yeah, on his day, shows up, he scores. Remember, Ronaldo is playing for his own record, like he normally does. He wants to try and get as many goals as he can, and I think he will score if he plays. So I think he will score. So 2 1 is a fair assessment. I'm going to say. 2-2 draw. Let's let's see Ronaldo uh, double there for United and get easy stats up. But then and, Arsenal, and, and Brighton beats Brighton beats a top four team Arsenal. So uh, yeah, they got something in there. They they can do it. They can do something. <laughs> right now for the game that you want to talk about, Wonga, you got a choice. Actually, in the comment section, we've got three choices here. Now I normally stick according to schedule as to when the games are being played on the weekend. But in terms of what you want to talk about right now. We can talk about Liverpool versus Spurs. We can talk about Arsenal versus Leeds. Or we can talk about Man City versus Newcastle. Which one do you want to talk about? Wonga Denga, which one are you leaning towards? Um, let's start the Leicester one. The Leicester? We're not talking about Leicester, bro. Where did you get that? We're not, we're not even going to cover Leicester. Man City, Leicester. No, you Man say? City, New, Newcastle. Did I say Leicester? <laughs> I sound like you said Leicester to me. Say, so, so, um, man. Oh, I would, man, let's go, Man City, Man City, yeah, Man City, Newcastle. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's, that's, that's going to be a spicy game. Yo, this weekend's going to be hectic, eh? All right, well, let's uh, talk about that then. Man City versus Newcastle. That's going to be hectic. Um, How much? But, wait, wait. Before you jump into this, before you jump into this, obviously they've come off the back now of a demoralizing, demoralizing sort of defeat. Do you think? And now there were some comments in our Discord channel that said, ah, you know, sure thing now, Man City take the league. <laughs> Or do you think this impacts them severely? In terms of, when we're looking at the mentality and what we're thinking is, are they playing now for the sake of going, well, we can only win the league. Let's make this right. Let's bounce back immediately. Let's get the three points on and make sure that we retain the Premier League and we keep it in our grasp and it's in our control. Or does this negatively affect them and they go, shit, Liverpool can win, can win four trophies here. And we've just come off the back of that. And does that add it? pressure to them and that does that lead to the results or to to a slip up look i think i think uh look the, the truth about man city is they are you don't want to play them when they've just lost because they really lose two games in a row um especially if they lose the next game it's going to be hellfire for the next team and i think that's what's going to happen with the newcastle but uh yeah, I think Man City also fortunate they're not going to St. James because uh, that would be different. But Newcastle has upset Liverpool, uh, Man City in the past. Uh, and and I think now now they would have a better team to do that. That's the truth. They have a better te- team. And when I say not not in terms of players, I'm just saying like the the team as a whole, um, well, what they're doing and stuff. They, they definitely in a better position to beat a Man City than they were in the past. But yeah, I think Man City, this win means it means more to them and they've just come for a loss. I think it'll be Newcastle's toughest game um, ever since they, they've had their new manager since, and their new run of four. I think it will be their toughest game. I think they could they could even um, leak in three and be humbled um, huh. by this. So, I think routine they could victory at the Etihad then? I wouldn't call it routine. I wouldn't call it routine in terms of I think they, they but they they definitely would. Yo, they're, they're going to stamp their dominance in that game. That's for sure. 
they were looking to do that. Yeah, and, 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 and so, so score, so scoreline. I would say three 0 to, to Man City. Three 0 Hmm. So that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one because, like I said, when you're looking at it, it's up to them now. They get to decide. You know, if if they slip up, and I, from, from, a, from a Liverpool perspective, this is it. If if Newcastle can do something, then they win for a shot. But if they did, what, <laughs> bro, you're distracting me with your mic there. You, you're lifting up, you're lifting down. It's affecting the sound there. Anyway, my point is, oh, sorry, don't make a noise. And it's it's, it's going to be tricky for them. It's going to be a tough one because you know psychologically, there's a lot playing on. I think if Newcastle can hold out the first half, we'll sense nerves creeping in a little bit. And the longer that goes on, the better it is for Liverpool, the better it is for the rest of the Premier League because I like to think no one wants a team to win the league three times in a row. Do they? Do you? Do you want that to happen? <laughs> yeah, true. I hear you on that one. Uh, but no, no, no. Don't give me to that. I don't want Liverpool to touch the league. Man City can take a B. Even if it was their 10th time taking it, no ways. No ways. You can't suck me to that one. <laughs> no ways. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hope for the best. I'm going to hope for the best. And I'm going to say it's going to be a 1 1 draw. That's what I'm going to hope for. I, I know Copper is coming out saying Bruno Gamarang is going to be feasting on them. And you can see a str- them struggling against Newcastle. They are in good form, is what he says. So I'm, I'm hoping for that. It's like the fires. You know, when the Brenner plays well, ah, just a guy. Just, even even yesterday, it was, yes, it was unbelievable. It's unbelievable football, Kevin De Bruyne. Um, and I think, yeah, if he's firing against the Newcastle, it's late. It's late for them. Uh, Gabriel will just be in awe. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him to swap shirts uh, at halftime, not at, even at the end of the game. All right. So, <laughs> Premier League, Arsenal versus Leeds. Wonga Denga, it is your time. Can you chase the third spot? You are hoping for Chelsea to drop points. So Arsenal can catch them. Is this where they do it? Yeah, and I think we've got a... a, a is it, I want to see. I don't know how he's doing Tomoyasu. I think he picked up something there against... Um, wait, 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 wait. Pums, Pums, just clarify. Is this 1-1 one, one draw for the, the Man City Newcastle game or for the Leeds-Arsenal game? Okay, as you were, Wonga. Definitely not the Leeds and Arsenal game. He knows we win. Now, um, news breaking that apparently Mbappe is staying at PSG. Check it out, guys. No way. Leave. Oh, you're boring me, Mbappe. Why the hell are you staying at PSG? What the heck? To do what? To do what are you doing at PSG? Oh, maybe he's still paying off his house or something, but that's that's ridiculous. Oh, come it's on. Paying... One gets houses, not house. Nah, bruh. Like... What? Ah, oh, bro, he's not, he's not, I mean, yeah, it's his choice, but come on, bro, hey, now we're boring, now he's not even, Aman, where, where can't even pulling, show where it. Where are you pulling these things from, honestly, where, like, where, where, what's your source that you get these things from? Yeah, yeah, tell okay. us the source there, because I don't want to be, I want to make sure that my, my, my frustration is, 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 is based on something real, yeah. You see, I told you, okay, Pum's so, knows. So Pum's saying, Pum's awesome, but he was actually saying, he's saying City draw, eh? If he's saying City draws... Yes. Pums, how many trophies do you think Liverpool are going to win? Okay, from now until the end of the show, in your comments, let us know how many trophies you think Liverpool will end up with. Okay, to the point of Arsenal leads. Let's go. What is that? One, uh, one goal or one trophy for Liverpool? Because we know there's no trophy yeah, for Arsenal. Yeah, they'll, they'll take, what is that thing? What's that trophy they got already? That, um, I forgot now, but yeah. Does that mean Haaland to Madrid? Haaland's but, going to uh, City. It's coming to Arsenal. Now listen, um, the I think I think our defense is it's getting back to what it was beginning of the season. Tomoyasu started well. Um, the only thing I, I never checked though if he will be starting because I saw he did pick up a knock during the game. Uh, they played this last weekend, uh, but yeah, I'm happy about that. Guy was very dicey, um, and Leeds will be looking to yeah the Carabao Cup. Yeah, that's the only cup they take. But anyways. I think um, I think uh, Tomias, not Tomias, what's his guy's name on the left? Uh, Tavares. is very, very concerning. Um, I know I did say that it was better to play him then. I still, I'm still of the opinion. Um, can't buy a young player like that and leave him on the bench. But what the heck? Like, <laughs> no ways. You can't do that. I, I don't agree with that. Yes, try try fix it. Goodness me, you guys gave Pepe not yeah. You guys gave Pepe weak chance, week in, week out. Now that I mentioned it, yeah, I forgot about that guy. He was just on our team. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Um, but, yeah, I think... Dude, it's like Hazard. I, Hazard last night when he came at the end of the game. I was like, 
It's just like a Madrid. I completely forgot he existed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeez, I even forgot about Pepe. When did he last play? Well, I've not been watching Arsenal games. Yo, what the heck? But anyways, um, I think... Okay, score. Score I, I prediction, definitely... We've got five minutes left here. Sorry, I, I definitely think we take it. Um, I said three. Three one will give leads to maybe Tavares makes one mistake. Three one will give it to them. But we take it. <laughs> All right, three one. I'm gonna say uh, I said a draw. I'm gonna say Leeds get a draw there. Um I'm not saying look Come the on. news about Mbappe came from Le Parisien and he's saying salary is about fifty million euros net year, signing both bonus of a hundred million. <laughs> Two-year contract, one-year option. Jeepers, that is ridiculous money. I would stay too. Who cares? Who cares about the footballing aspect right now? That's a lot, a lot of money. Um, last game. Last game. Leeds versus Spurs at home. One game. Be honest with yourself here. Yeah? You are pushing for third place. But this game, is this trickier on paper? Or will it actually be a tricky, tricky fixture? What do you think is going to happen here? Look, Tottenham, you don't know what Tottenham's going to show up. It's the same Tottenham that beat Man City in the beginning of the of the league. That's that's the problem. And it's it's Son and Harry Kane. Those are arguably the best strikers in the league. Uh, with Ronaldo up there as well. They are I wouldn't even say arguably. Like genuine. You'd, any any team in the league, if Son City was leaving, and Man City would put something for him. Definitely. Harry Kane, you know, guys are in the limbo bottom, yeah, they take him. If if Man City could take Son and Kane, they take them both. Hundred percent. They'll take them right now. You've got then you've got a you've got a they've got a definitely a deep squad if they take those uh, those two players. But, yo, and them alone now it's it's, it's 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 enough to cause problems. Look, Lucas in the in in, in there um, in the middle on the on the wing as well. It's a problem for them. The defense, I would say, is probably the weakest point at at Spurs. But coming up front, they can harm anyone, kill anyone. They can you know the defense just needs to be organized and they can they can hurt Liverpool. Um, and that's that's why I say like you just I don't know what Spurs is gonna pop up. Uh, if they if they lose, I'm chilled. It's kind of confusing as well because I just like them to stop Liverpool now. Then yo, I don't know where to be, Claudio. Can't I? <laughs> I just don't know where to be with this game. I don't know. I can't even give a prediction because I, <laughs> I don't know you, you, what stuck, to say. You, you're stuck in between. You're stuck in like the, the the winter winter in South Africa where you know I, it's cold but it's hot and you don't know if, whether or not you should wear a jersey or you should go out in a t-shirt. Is that where you're at right now? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I think if I look at couple. Whew, but my couple, bro, I don't care who you are. If Harry Kane and Son and, and Lucas link up there, it's late. I don't care who you are. I don't care what team is there. They can cause problems, but even if a dyke wouldn't be enough to stop it. But So, I mean, this but is the yeah, thing, you, right? you, We know, it's to your point, what kind of Spurs are we going to get? We know Spurs and Harry Kane in particular right now, according to how the theme of the season has been for Spurs, is that they do enjoy showing up for the big games. And this is the type of big game that they would love to spoil. You know, that's the game at the party that they're going to just crash and say, look, we know we weren't invited, but my name is Harry Kane. And, you know, you will see that I am an MVP. So that's kind of the sort of situation. Also, Son's performances. I think this is the best goal scoring performance he's had at Spurs ever. So the situation is we do know how Spurs are going to set up against Liverpool. They're going to sit deeper. They're going to wait for those counterattacks that you're talking about, trying to ex- exploit the, the space in behind. The likelihood is Kane will get onto the ball and wait for Son to make those runs. The question is how many times can they do it and when they get those chances, because they will get those chances, can they take those chances? Yeah. And then again, True. can they combat the relentless onslaught of the Liverpool attack and crosses and, 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 because Liverpool yeah. will have that position. That's what they're going to do. You afford them time and space. So the situation here that I'm looking at, Pums is saying Man City and Newcastle 1-1 draw. He's also predicting a draw here. That would be an incredible double whammy. Wonga, do you see that happening? Two draws on the weekend. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say 2-2, two, two, yeah, because I don't know. Not, not two draws. I think Man City take it. But I think this one, I think I'm going to say it because I don't know which way it's going to go. I'll say 2-2. Two, two. I really don't know. <laughs> Yep. I really don't okay, know. Okay, draw. But look, I think Copper's saying, coming up with a good question here. Yeah. When was the last time Spurs beat Liverpool at Anfield? He can't even remember. I can't even remember. I just know Spurs it, is one of those teams. It's a frustrating team for Liverpool. Over the years, prior to this sort of, this, uh, you know, at Liverpool are at now, the, like, you know, the Transformers, when all the vehicles come together, that they that mega Transformer yes. right now. That's what they are. Um, over the years, even when Liverpool were decent, they still struggled to beat Spurs. So, yeah, to your point, we don't know what's going to happen here. Yeah? 
Um, Armand's saying, lol, it's funny now that Madrid fans were chanting Mbappe name for the whole game at Benabar. Yeah, yeah. And they have Hazard on the bench. (laughs) 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 Oh, that's funny. Oh, All right, so you so you said TT TT draw, correct? Yeah, I said TT draw. I don't know what you're going to say. I'm going to say benefits Liverpool. me. That actually benefits me nicely both ways. <laughs> Liverpool Liverpool win three one win. I'm going to go with that. That's uh, what he wants, guys. That's hot speaking. Nah, no, nah, I think speaking. I think they can do it. Pum's asking if we're going to cover Europa. Um, obviously, game's taking place tonight. I know David Moy is saying that. You know, it's his time to win a trophy finally after all these years. He's, he's saying he believes and he hopes now is the time to finally bring it home. Obviously, with them, West Ham taking on Frankfurt, Wonga Denga, they are one game away from making it to the finals of the Europa. We've got Rangers and Leipzig on the other end. And you've got to say, if West Ham can beat Frankfurt tonight, they've got a good chance of winning the Europa. Yeah, and I, and I, and I think Moise has been focusing on that one, to be honest with you. Um, they've done well. I mean, it's yeah. I think they'll, they'll fight, and I think they can get there. Um, won't be an easy one. Um, just did you know what the 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 the, the what is this thing? The aggregate score is there. Yeah. I I'll check it out now. Let me see what we can get you yeah, before but, we go to the final thoughts. Oh, two one. So yeah. Frankfurt won the first first game two one. At yo, oh, that's hectic. Okay, but yeah, I I, I definitely think West Ham can come back. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, shame. Arsenal, we, Arsenal, we beat them, so we probably demoralised them just a little bit there. But uh, yeah, maybe they they get it. If you if, if Moy says they want it as bad as he wants it, then yeah, I think they can turn things around. But it's not going to be easier. To Frank, Frankfurt, are, yeah, pretty decent side as well. I would like to see a, a West Ham versus Rangers in the final. Hmm. Copper saying. Oh, Cup with rather, sorry. Saying Chelsea, Arsenal and West Ham all in the Champions League next season. Wonga, you'd, you'd love to hear that. Only Tottenham will be missing. The, this is the bonus. He says only Tottenham will be missing the London team. That That's the one. Okay, so very happy, Wonga. We're going to wrap up this evening. If you join us for the first time, I just want to say thank you very much. If you see me in the dark, that's because ESCOM is a thing. And um, final thoughts there, Wonga Denga. Where are you at? I'll say it again. Arsenal... Top three. We we down to the top four race. We go for top three now. Jeez. I need to you know what I need to do? To create like a montage of your reaction throughout the whole year from the start of the season to the end of the season, your little comments. But yes, top three there for Arsenal. I'm gonna say <laughs> Liverpool. You know what I'm gonna say, Wonga? You can predict what I'm gonna say. What am I gonna say? <laughs> uh two trophies. <laughs> Sorry, I, nah, I can't see bro. you, Wonga. I can't see you, man. I can't see you. That, that can't there happen. Go. You're quad if anything drupal. in this world, that can't quadruple. happen. Quadruple. You know, we'll never be signed. Can I just say, can I just say, you know what a quadruple will mean? You know what I mean? You know that Arsenal season where they went unbeaten for how many games? Yeah. I, I, think, I think a quadruple raises that, personally speaking. Definitely. No, you, you, you've lost matches. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't count. It does. Quadruple. You've never. How many finals? I mean, you've never even won the Champions League. Wait, first let Arsenal win the Champions League, and then we can talk. <laughs> then we can talk. Right. It's next year. Very much I to say next year. <laughs> yeah, it's next year. <laughs> Pums is saying Champions League and the Baby Cup for for Liverpool. All right. That's the way. Pums, let's see what happens this weekend. Um. Let's see, you know, let's I'm I'm hoping Chelsea get the points there just so they can they can fake their sort of momentum and believe they can win the FA Cup and so Arsenal do not claim third place. So I'm I'm in your camp this weekend, Pums. Um so wishing you all the best. Wagga Denga, thank you very much for joining me and thank you very much for, for captaining the ship solo this evening for a short start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you do. Um one day we 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 trying to climb there, guys. We are trying to climb. That's what Ooh, you do. As, as Wonga Denga, read read that. Read that out loud. All right, couple, read couple. That. We can't. Capo, capo, capo. <laughs> no capo. ways. Yes, capo. No ways. Capo, no, no ways. No, no read ways. it out loud. No, read it loud. Read it out loud before we go. Come on. I need my glasses. I can't see. Ah, uh, Wonga Denga. It's all right <laughs> for everyone listening and not actually watching the show. Arsenal. <laughs> so Capo is an Arsenal fan and saying. He agrees with me in terms of 
quadruple over unbeaten season. Thank you very much, couple. I thank you. And on that note, on that note, Wonga, you know how to end the show. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Sorry.